Hello. You all know how much I love my small RX100 cameras. I always carry at least one of them with me at all times. Actually, I have two with me right now. They fit in my pocket and they are just almost perfect cameras. They don't produce the highest quality out there, but they make possible some images that wouldn't be possible otherwise. For example, I made this image of a couple swans swimming on the river a few days ago. I was literally coming back from the grocery store and I was uh, taking the image, taking the photo with my right hand while I was holding the groceries on my left hand. So that is amazing. It gives you a flexibility and it gives you the option to make images anywhere at any time. Another image that I made with this tiny camera was uh, the current image of the month, uh, Golden Gate. I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below just in case you wanna check it out. One of the things that I like the most about these cameras is that they are complete systems out of the box. It's not like you can go and buy new lenses for them. This is what you get and this is what you have to use. This doesn't mean that we can't expand the flexibility and the functionality of these cameras though. There are five accessories that I wanted to share with you today that I find really useful and I use them all the time with these uh, little cameras. I'm gonna leave links in the description to those accessories so you can check them out. They are affiliate links. So the first accessory is a cage for the camera. I have two, I'm gonna show you both of them. This is the first one I bought for the RX100 Mark V, my 5A. And this one, I don't love it. I don't love the design. As you can see, it attaches around the lens. So I am always afraid that all, I know, that is creating a lot of pressure around the lens and it might damage the camera. That's why I don't leave the camera in this cage. But it's a pretty useful uh, cage because it offers you a lot of uh, mounting points. As you can see here, out of the box, these cameras don't have anywhere to mount a microphone, for example. I think it was the, uh, I have here, this is the Mark II, and this is the last model with a cold shoe, as you can see there. The Mark III added an electronic viewfinder, so there is no room for the cold shoe anymore. So if you wanna mount something like a microphone or a monitor or whatever you wanna mount on these cameras, you're gonna need a cage. As I said, this is not my favorite cage. Uh, when I got the RX100 Mark VII, I got a new cage. Uh, as you can see, this one only offers uh, protection. It only covers, protects the camera on the right side and the bottom. It comes with uh, two cold shoes here and here, so you don't need to buy extra uh, cold shoes to mount. What I love about both these uh, cages is that besides giving you mounting points for accessories and besides the protection that they offer, they also uh, give you access to the battery door. You can see here, so you can change the battery, you can change the memory card, even when you have uh, these cameras mounted on a tripod, because by default, the tripod mount is here. So when you put a tripod plate here, you can't open the, the door, so you have to take it out. It's a little bit of a pain because these cameras really drain batteries so you'll have to change them very often and having to take the, the tripod plate every time it's uh, really annoying. The second accessory is a microphone. So this only applies to the RX100 Mark VII because unfortunately the 5A doesn't have a microphone jack. This is the first model in the RX100 series with a microphone jack and I love it. I try to use my Rode Video Micro as much as I can. I'm using it to record this video right now so I can't show it to you. But that microphone is uh, it's pretty good for what I want it for. I usually mount it here on this cold shoe but the thing is that that microphone is rather big for this camera and it's not pocketable anymore. It's not like I can put it here with a microphone on top. So that's why I bought this little one. This is a harmonic microphone. By default, it comes, let me show you, it comes like this. So it's really, really small. So you can attach it here. This is a directional mic, so it picks only what it's in front of the microphone. And this is a really tiny, small package, and you get great sound with this. The problem with this microphone is that it's very sensitive, so outside, like I am right now, even with the slightest uh, wind, uh, that is gonna pick up that noise. So you need a uh, dead cat for this microphone. I got this one, and I uh, attach it to the microphone with a rubber band, and it works pretty well. It's a package that I can fit in my pocket, with microphone and everything, so I'm always ready to take photos or to record videos. 
Okay, third accessory, of course, a tripod. Uh, I use uh, these cameras for video mainly, so I need to record myself like I'm doing now, or if I'm going on a hike to record myself uh, walking and hiking. So I have two tripods for that. This is the, the one that I use for those uh, moments, for those situations, for those hikes, because I can extend it. I've talked about this tripod before. I'm gonna link the video somewhere around here but this is a very light tripod it's not the most stable it's not the most reliable tripod it has fallen before for sure but it's amazing for hikes because it's very light and it fits in my backpack the second tripod that i use for these cameras is this uh, tiny manfrotto tabletop tripod i use it to hold the camera away from me or also to put it on the on a table on a desk and record myself and stuff like that it's very convenient fourth accessory nd filters so i have one this one is a variable nd filter i use this one for video so one thing that you might know is that the mark 5a has a built-in nd filter a three stop built-in uh, ND filter and that is very useful when you're recording video because this lens can only step down to f11 so when it's really bright outside you can enable that uh, ND filter and you can still keep recording without blowing out the highlights that's something that the mark 7 doesn't have anymore because of the new lens this lens reaches to 200 millimeters this one only reaches uh, to 70 millimeters but the compromise is that it doesn't have a built-in ND filter anymore so what i what i did is uh, i bought this uh, adapter because by default you can't mount filters on these cameras so this is a 52 millimeter filter thread adapter or something so you can buy or you can mount filters that are 52 millimeter i use this nd filter with the mark 7 for video all the time i even like it more than the built-in nd filter here because you can control this one is a three stop nd filter and there is no way to change that but this one you can regulate it here is variable as i said you can use one stop two stops or the three stops so that is uh, pretty amazing because it gives you more flexibility of course it's annoying that you have to manage here this one is built in but it's still pretty useful but i have more nd filters i have this uh, set of uh, gobby i think is how you say it gobby nd filters and they are if i'm not wrong three five and ten stop ND filters. So I really like how they come packaged. As you can see, they are here. They are very well protected this way and they don't take any room in my backpack. As you can see, they are really tiny ND filters. So when I want to use one, I just have to unscrew it from here. There you go. And I just mount it on my camera. These ones I use for long exposures. I really like these ND filters. They are not cheap, but they are completely worth it. They only go up to 10 stops, but if I need more, I just uh, mount uh, two on top of each other. So for a total of, uh, I don't know, three, five, and 10, 18 stops, that's more than enough for what I do. And the last accessory I wanted to share with you today is this wide-angle adapter. So, as you know, uh, these cameras are fixed-lens uh, cameras. You can't change them. So, the range of this camera is 24 to 70 millimeters equivalent. The other one, the Mark 7, is 24 to 200. So, when it comes to the long range, uh, I'm well served here. 200 millimeters is more than enough for a pocket camera. But sometimes I wish I could go wider than 24 millimeters. I really hope Sony if you are listening you need to release a, another camera companion to the Mark 7 call it the Mark 7a if you want that brings back the faster lens this is a 1.8 but also offer a wider angle something like 18 to 28 something like that f 1.8 or even 1.4 would be the perfect camera to go with the Mark 7. Anyway, we don't have that camera now. That camera doesn't exist. So I was uh, looking for some uh, solutions or for some uh, alternatives, uh, ways to capture wider angles. And I found this uh, uh, cheap wide angle adapters. This is a 52 millimeter adapter. And it works pretty much the same way that the lenses for smartphones work. So you just attach uh, this thing on your lens as you can see it's huge for uh, this camera but it works and it gives you a wider uh, field of view i don't know exactly how wide i think it's going to be around 20 millimeters or something like that so as i said this is pretty cheap it's like 20 bucks so the quality is not the best the corners get 
pretty much destroyed. I use this filter quite a lot uh, during the Camino, the video that I made of the Camino de Santiago. There are some uh, shots that I made with this one because I wanted to take a, a wider angle. I work just fine. I'm pretty sure that no one noticed uh, those uh, short clips. Uh, for images that would be a bigger deal, I guess, but for me, since I cropped to one by one anyway, I'm getting rid of the corners no matter what. This is a very good uh, solution. The only problem that I have with this thing is that it's pretty heavy and I'm concerned that having it on the lens like this all the time might damage the lens. I only have it on the camera when I use it, when I'm not using it, I take it out. But yeah, it's very useful and it's very, for the price, it's 20, 20 bucks, you can't really go wrong. As I said, I'm gonna leave links down below in the description to all these accessories. I just wanted to mention one last one, a bonus one. It's a pretty obvious one, but anyway, you need a charger, an external charger. You can charge the batteries in camera, but you can only charge it one by one. And I have nine for my two, for my three RX100, because you'll need them all if you use these cameras uh, a lot. I use them a lot, and I need the, the nine batteries. And charging nine batteries uh, with uh, the camera is, uh, is a little bit of a pain. If you buy uh, third-party batteries, they come with chargers like this. So I have a couple of these, I think, that they are able to charge charge three at a time so this is amazing in a couple hours i have all my batteries charged again and i'm ready to go out and this is it these are the five plus one accessories that i use with my beloved rx100 cameras they make these amazing cameras even more amazing if uh, you have uh, or you know of an accessory that i haven't mentioned here please leave it in the comment down below because i might be very interested but yeah this is all for today i hope you found this video helpful Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.